Welcome to lesson one of the Watercolor Journey Painting Challenge. Hi, I'm Chris, artist, designer, watercolor teacher, and desert dweller, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm excited to get into lesson one because today I'm going to talk to you about watercolor supplies I'm using during this challenge and why. I love to keep my supplies simple, and although I'm sharing what I'm using, you can feel free to use whatever you have at home or to use whatever watercolor supplies are your favorite. I don't judge. And I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy the best watercolor supplies on the market, but good supplies will make painting easier and therefore more fun. Like anything else, the more you invest in your setup, the better results you'll get. That's not just financial investment, but also in knowledge investment. Learning what it means to have good quality supplies is more important than going out and buying the most expensive ones. For example, cheap watercolors contain fillers that can leave your paintings looking chalky after they dry. Poorly made brushes are hard to control, and low quality paper buckles badly under a lot of water. Most students quit before they find out if they even like watercolor painting because they are so frustrated with their supplies. The saddest thing about it, though, is that these students don't even know that the supplies were the problem. They think it was their lack of talent or lack of skill that caused them to create paintings that they weren't happy with. And while beginners don't have all the answers, low quality watercolor supplies are a big part of the problem. The simple truth is that it's easy to put a lovely kit of watercolor supplies together when you know what you're looking for and you don't even have to break the bank. I personally don't use the most expensive supplies on a daily basis but I do get quality supplies that I really enjoy using because I know the difference. I have some Arches cold press watercolor papers that, that is considered one of the best, but it's not cheap. So for this challenge and also for most of the classes and courses I teach, I use Canson 300 pound cold press paper that's nice and thick and it absorbs quite a bit of water. It comes in the sketchbook format that I love. I can keep all my paintings together and this seven by 10 size is perfect for most of my projects. I also have this same paper in nine by 12 as well when I want to work a bit bigger. Then I reserve the arches paper for very special projects and I'm happy using the cats and paper for every day. This works great for me. And just because we're creative doesn't mean we can't be a little practical. The best papers, meaning the most absorbent, will have a cotton content. I love this watercolor sketch pad I got from Viviva Colors. I've gotten this paper really wet and it holds up very nicely. And this size and shape is great for my travels too. Regarding brushes, I generally use good synthetic brushes. You'll know it's good when you flick the bristles with your thumb and they spring right back. This is a sign of good performance. But if you do this test and the bristles just sit there, that brush will be harder to control while you're painting. Another sign of low quality is when the bristles fall out and get stuck in your paint. <laughs> that is not what you want happening. These brushes are made by Wonder and Weiss and aren't the best quality, but they have a nice spring to them. And they did shed a little bit at the beginning, but I've been using them since for about five years with no problems at all. So I'm going to keep going with it. The very best brushes are made with natural fibers like squirrel, sable, or horse hair. The upside to these brushes is that they perform really well in general and are more biodegradable than synthetic brushes when they're thrown away. The downside is that hopefully they don't hurt the animals when they manufacture these. So for now, I'm going to stick to my synthetic brushes as long as I can. And when I'm ready for some new ones, I'll probably decide to invest in, a, in an even more higher quality synthetic set. The watercolor paint brand that I've used for years is Windsor & Newton. I used it when I was studying art as a major in school, and it has been consistently quality in performance. So when Viviva Colors from India reached out to me, a few years ago to be a brand ambassador for them, I was kind of skeptical at first, but they were so warm and so amazing about sending me some paints to try out before committing to anything. So I thought, why not give them a try? I am so glad I did because I have never looked back. Viviva Colors paint sets are so fun to use that I haven't even touched my brand new Windsor & Newton 12-piece pan set. Sorry, Windsor & Newton, but I will get back to it eventually. For now, there is so much to enjoy about the Viviva colors. To give you the quick rundown, they come in these flat, super lightweight booklets that I can take with me anywhere. There are 16 colors in each set, except the metallic set, that are so saturated. And this little paint set lasts me at least two years. Then when the colors run out, I can get replacement sets for just a few dollars. They are handmade in India by a small family-owned business 
and made with natural vegan dyes from the earth. But the best part is that each set is 100% sustainable and biodegradable. So I can feel responsible for the environment when I use them. And they are so reasonably priced. If you're interested in getting some of these paints, I have a code for you in the description of this video for 10% off your entire purchase. And you can click on the screen now to watch the 10 things I learned while using Viviva Colors these last few years where I share the good and the bad for a fair assessment of these paints and you can really see what you're getting yourself into. If you don't wanna leave this video just yet though, I've included a link for this video in the description. Besides that, I have paper towels and rags to wipe off brushes and any messes I make, two jars of water for brush rinsing and a pencil and eraser for sketching. I've been using two jars this last couple of years and it's kind of been game changing. If you use one jar as your main rinse water and the other just to polish it off a little bit and keep it a little cleaner, so I highly recommend it. If you don't have a jar or a coffee cup that you can use or a glass from your cupboard, you can go into your recycle bin and pull a coffee or cold drink cup from there and fill it with water and that works just great too. As a side note, I keep a small house painting brush handy to brush away eraser dust after sketching in case my hands are dirty. And that's everything I'm going to be using for this challenge on a regular basis. I may introduce another type of brush or other supplies here and there just to keep things interesting along the way, but I'll be sure to tell you exactly what it is and why I'm using it. Plus, it will never be anything you'll have to go out and purchase to participate in this challenge. Sometimes it's just fun to change things up a bit though. Well, thanks for watching lesson one of the Watercolor Journey Paint Challenge, and I will see you in the next lesson to talk about everyone's favorite subject, color. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any new lessons as they come out. In lesson two, I'll share some color mixing tips with you, talk to you about color palettes, and more. I'll see you there.